Hey guys, welcome to Empower In and welcome back to another edition of Storytime. So it's that time when you grab a cup of coffee or if you're crazy like me and you like hot water with lemon and cayenne pepper, you grab that and we're going to sit down, chat, and I will tell you about a hospital experience that I had and I hope that it helps you out, maybe makes you laugh a little bit at how crazy it can be working in a hospital, but also makes you feel a tad bit more normal. So this story that I wanna share with you happened a few years ago and I had a patient that was very different, very, very different patient. You know, a lot of times you just see kind of the same people, same sorts of personalities, you know, like over and over again. But some people really stand out, like they're just unforgettable. Well, this was one of those patients that was literally unforgettable. So he was unforgettable because he was so intelligent and he really like knew how to, to use the system. So I think he'd been admitted multiple times. I think that he was very mentally ill, but with every single person, he really knew how much to push them and how much to pull back. So this particular patient, he had a sitter because he was having bizarre behavior in the ER, which I found out by reading the medical record, and he kept walking into other patients' rooms. So he came up with a sitter order. And if you guys you know, work in the hospital now, you might be pre-nursing students, you can have a sitter ordered for safety reasons, and that doesn't mean you know, by law, like they're not Baker acted or anything like that. It just means for safety reasons, we're just watching them a little bit closer so that they don't harm themselves or others. So the first situation that happened with him is first thing in the morning, literally at 7.30, I didn't even finish report yet. He's with his sitter and he charges at the sitter. The sitter's freaking out. I'm freaking out because this guy's, you know, kind of big, probably 200 pounds, maybe like 5'10 or something like that. So I told the sitter, I was like, stay outside here. Let's watch him from a distance. And I called a code gray. A code gray, if you don't know, it's hospital code for basically, we need um, safety help with security. Also the nursing supervisor will come and whoever else is assigned to that code, uh, usually the psychiatric team from the psychiatric unit. So. Code Gray was called and lo and behold, when the people got there, this patient was calm as a cucumber and speaking to everybody just completely with laser focus, 100% appropriate. And what was even more interesting is with my nursing supervisor who spoke Spanish, he spoke fluent Spanish to him. And then with one of the security personnel who spoke Creole, he spoke perfect Creole to him. So. It was just a real bizarre situation. Everyone was like, you know, why did you call Code Gray on this person? I was like, no, literally he charged at the sitter. Like, I'm not making this up. I've never, I don't call Code Gray. This is the first Code Gray I've called in this hospital. Like, he charged at him. And I usually dissolve situations, but safety first, you know? So the doctor comes, makes an assessment. And he's like, I can't Baker Act him. Um, he's completely lucid. And, you know, there's really at that point, like, you know, the doctor's not gonna Baker Act this patient. He's fully 100% saying that he's sorry, it was a misunderstanding, he was just grabbing something. So basically now it's already against his. Anyways, as the day goes on, he just has like more kind of bizarre behaviors. And so it's ultimately decided that he should go to a lockdown unit. Now the lockdown unit is usually for psychiatric patients that are Baker Acted. However, they can go there if they want like closer monitoring, but it's, it's not like a legal thing, it's just, Let's go there because we actually needed the sitter out on the floor to help with other things. Well, that's the last thing I knew. I probably transferred him like around three or four o'clock. That's pretty much it. I finished up my notes and that's it. So I think this was, I think Thursday, Friday night, I get a call from my agency saying there was a situation with the client. You need to go in Monday morning and there's going to be a discussion. I'm like, okay, what happened? Is everything okay? And I don't know if you've ever had this happen to you. They usually just tell you, you need to go in and discuss something happened. And so I'm like, all right, you know, you can't give me any more information. And they don't know any information, by the way. The person who's calling you probably has no idea. So I'm like, all right, Monday morning it is. So here it is, Friday night, and I get this call, and I can't talk about it or find out what's going on until Monday. And that's pretty much usually how it is. They don't give you any information. They just tell you something happened. We have to discuss this, blah, blah, blah. So I know now that I should not freak out about these things because usually they're just learning experiences in general because even if it is a mistake that you made, it's really just all about a learning experience. But I'm still human. 
So I'm going through my mind and I'm like, what could have possibly happened? Like, did I injure somebody? Did I kill somebody? Did some, what could have possibly happened? So I'm visualizing all of my patients that I had when I left Thursday. I'm like, okay, I left with four patients. I discharged two and then one was transferred. The one that was transferred was stable. The discharges were stable. You know, when I left and gave report, everything seemed fine. So what could it possibly be? So I'm going through each patient. I'm like, did I miss something? Did I do this? What could I have possibly done? I can't really think of anything. I just have absolutely no idea what this is about. Now, in order for me to deal with the stress that goes on in the job, I've made a pact with myself and I think my husband appreciates it, but I do not talk about work at home. It's a law that I've made. I will talk about it with you guys and I'm in my home now, but it is a law that I've made. I do not discuss work at home. So I had to deal with this and I'm not really sure. I'm really you know, stressed out about it. So I dealt with it as best as I could living in Miami, Florida. Probably looked something like this. I don't remember, it was a few years ago. Actually, I, I don't I don't think it looked like that. Yeah, I think it looked a little bit more like that. I tried to be cool. Anyways, so Monday morning comes, 9 a.m. I'm in the office with like a bunch of other people from all different departments. The director of the unit's there, charge nurses, like oh, probably about 12 different people are in there. Come to find out that patient that I had transferred, who I just told you about that was like, had really bizarre behavior, he, when he got to the lockdown unit around 7.30, around shift change, I guess he had an episode again, like the one that he had at 7.30 in the morning. He got belligerent on the staff and said he was leaving. So without a Baker Act order, the nurses let him out because legally you can't keep him there. I guess he wasn't being bad enough for them to call code gray. Like I wasn't there, I didn't see it. Whatever it is, this was a psychiatric unit. They dealt with it as well as they could have and they let the patient leave. So I guess middle of the night, he is found by the police walking on a major high way completely naked the only thing he has on not socks not shoes not a shirt not underwear nothing except a hospital armband so the police brought him back to the hospital and this is what we had to basically discuss so the whole discussion was basically on how we can identify situations like this how could we have possibly better dealt with it um, in this situation maybe I could have possibly encouraged the doctor to Baker Act him because maybe I could have expressed more that, that he should be Baker Acted so on my end I'm taking that lesson and I'm trying to you know get better at identifying patients that might be in need in that way on the other end security could have been more on the lookout because he obviously left in a hospital gown because that's what he was wearing so every department was involved and we were all just trying to figure out how we can better care for this patient and other patients that this might happen to in the future I wanted to share this story with you though because you know again it can just be so nerve-wracking especially when you're new and you don't know how everything runs in the hospital and you get these calls a terrible thing has happened you need to be here and you know you're thinking that you might have like really seriously injured somebody when really it's all about just finding ways to improve the whole situation catch things earlier and just you know be a better facility that takes better care of our patients. So I really hope that you liked this story. I enjoyed sharing it with you so much. And by the way, I just wanted to share with you a little bit more about these scrubs because they're super cute. What I love about these scrubs is first of all, super soft. Love it. Love, love, love the, the way these feel. They're also very light. Um, I took these out of the box and put them on an hour ago. I received them yesterday. Did not open them until about an uh, well, no, maybe like three or four hours ago. Anyways, look, out of the box, no wrinkles. So I'm not sure if this just happened, if it's like a wrinkle-proof material. I don't know, but they don't have any wrinkles in them, which is great for me because people always call me out because I have wrinkles on my scrubs. I'm sorry, I just, I don't have time to iron my scrubs. Like, not happening. And my dryer doesn't get hot enough to take all of the wrinkles out. I don't know why. Like, if they, they don't make dryers that get super hot anymore or I just bought the wrong one. I don't know. Anyways, what I love about these scrubs though is, is awesome pockets. So they seriously take the pocket situation to a whole nother level. Like, when you put the scrubs on, you can also look. I just went to Japan. Can you guys see this? I'm getting like really obsessed with like fun animature pens, so I don't know. Anyways, you can put your pens here for all of your important documents that need to be signed. The pockets here have like little dividers, which is awesome. Like honestly, this is one of the scrub companies that's really taking the pockets seriously, which is very comforting because this is still work. Like yeah, we want to look good, but I feel like a lot of companies are skimping on this area and don't do that. Like. 
we still need functional pockets. And so this company has really taken the functional pocket thing to a whole nother level, which is awesome. They have like, when you put your arms in, you're like, wait, what's going on? Because seriously, there's like multiple dividers in every single pocket. It's awesome. And then the pockets on the pants too. Again, you like, you put your hands in the pocket and you're like, this is something different. Like they have all kinds of like little functional things. So anyways, all in all together, definitely check these scrubs out. They're awesome. And I really appreciate them sending me a pair and I don't accept anything unless you guys get something. So they said that they would give a discount for my subscribers and I will put the information below. So make sure you check that out. I'm not really sure if there's going to be an expiration date or anything. So definitely pick them up right away, try them out and let me know what your thoughts are. All right guys, thank you so much for watching and being part of my life. And I just, I love you guys so much. Again, if you're in the Idaho area, make sure you're going to the Idaho Student Nursing Association. I'm going to be speaking there and I'm telling you, this is something that you do not wanna miss. If you are anywhere near this area, you definitely want to go because I am so excited. I can't even contain myself. All right guys, I will talk to you soon. I'll see you next Tuesday for sure. All right. I love you guys so much. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.